The Source Open Your Mind, Change Your Life by Tara Swart or What If What If You can get no satisfaction Cause you try and you try and you try You can get no satisfaction When you are driving in your car When a man come on the radio He's telling you more and more about some useless information Supposed to fire your imagination What If The Rolling Stone song is a key to change your life. We should use our imagination and doing changes. So, how else can we go about living our best lives? Today with me, The Source and Dr. Tara Swart. Stay with us. Dr. Swart explains that we can shape our material circumstances and relationships simply by directing our thoughts. Is it a magic? I don't think so. You know, Dr. Swart is a real doctor. Through a series of exercises, we can merge the limbic brain, which controls our more spiritual thinking with the cortex, the logical bit. Sound unlikely? Well, something as simple as changing your route to work takes the brain off autopilot making it more receptive to new ideas like this. What do you know about your brain? It's the source. It's the source of you and your life. Swartz's method is neuroplasticity, the ability of the brain to change. You will find plenty of examples of neuroplasticity in this book. Something as simple as trying to recall what you had for lunch yesterday strengthens the connections in your brain. Okay, and right now, shh, did you remember? New experiences such as travel, learning a skill, read new books, and meeting new people can stimulate the growth of new neurons, the mechanism of neuroplasticity. Wow! In scientific terms, there are three distinct processes for neuroplasticity, learning, perfecting, and retraining. Learning, an actual increase in the number of connections between neurons, so more neurons are connected to each other through the synapses. Perfecting, this tends to occur when you become expert in something, which can be identified if you take easily to something even after years of neglect. It's like a highway for your neurons. This maximizes the efficiency of the pathways made up of neurons that are already connected, like insulation that ensures the electricity is maximized and not dissipated. Retraining The scientific term for this third process of neuroplasticity is neurogenesis. This is hard work and time-consuming as it needs to be followed by learning and possibly perfecting. This makes sense as in practical terms, trying to train yourself to acquire a new skill that is alien and new is likely to be frustrating and something that only those who have lots of spare time and energy would consider embarking upon. Brain scans show that all sorts of activities can induce change in the brain, but three factors in particular have the most impact. Ask yourself how much of each of the following factors you currently have in your life and how you might be able to introduce more of them. Number one. Novelty. Right now you know. New experiences such as travel, learning new skills, and reading new books, and meeting new people are such healthy experience. Novel experiences can even stimulate growth of new neurons. And tell me, When was the last time you tried something totally new? Number two, aerobic exercise. This has been found to increase oxygen-rich blood flow to the brain and allow us to release brain-derived 
neurotrophic factor BDNF, the endorphins that allows the growth of new neurons. And tell us, do you regularly walk 10,000 steps per day and do 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week? Number 3. Emotional stimulations. The more you experience something and the more intense the emotions associated with it, the more powerful is the effect on the brain. This is why even having shared a traumatic event can be very bounding. It's the impact of your emotional responses, both positive and negative. In short, though emotions have a neuron endocrine effect, for example, sharing laughter with your loved ones has a beneficial effect through the release of the bonding hormone oxytocin, which is associated with trust. For similar reasons, breakups can have extremely negative and long-lasting consequences on your mental health, because the high levels of emotions related to shame and sadness correlate to the release of the stress hormone cortisol, which literally locks in connections that loving and trusting someone leads to pain and loss. Can you think of any examples of strong emotions, good or bad, that have locked in strong memories for you? Neuroplasticity is directed by repetition, for good or ill. So, it's worth remembering that negative thinking and adjective behavior can become self-perpetuating, serving to further embed anxiety, depression, obsessive thinking and aggression. Please, be careful. Rethinking amygdala hijack There is a concept known as amygdala hijack which was popularized by Daniel Goldman in his 1996 book Emotional Intelligence. He described a state where you are so overcome by strong emotions, usually fear or anger, that you are hijacked by them, powerless to control your resultant thoughts and actions. The science has moved on in the last few decades, and we now know that although it may be harder to regulate strong emotions in the state, it is still within our power to recognize, manage and improve our behavior. It's interesting how what we believe affects how we behave, even unconsciously. Throughout this book you will be given the opportunity to disrupt yourself by challenging what you have previously heard as true that is not serving you, and to create a different future. A strong ability to regulate emotions is something we need to work at. Practices such as mindfulness help building and expanding the pause between our thought and our response to it. Stop negative filtering. Dr. Swart shared with us the story. Brown Red Pen Thinking One of my most creative friends is an entrepreneur who has built a brand from nothing. She's always innovating and thinking up new schemes. Her partner is the same. When I asked her what her secret was, she said simply, there is no such thing as a bad idea in our house. She explained that she and her partner give each other and their kids permission to explore their ideas without shutting them down. Good ideas will naturally rise up and stand out, stamping on them, yours or anybody else, before you've had a chance to weigh them up can only be damaging. Once we give ourselves permission to open up and play with lots of potential ideas and possibilities, Creativity rewards us, and I bring us to spot opportunities in unlikely places. It means we can sense when to take a chance and when to question 
are pure to something. It helps us hone a strong intuition, giving us the flexibility to recognize possibilities that might bypass us otherwise. Remember, you are the source. You are the creator of your life. Then, then take responsibility for your life. Turn off social media! Are you okay with that? Okay. Nothing can stop you. Now. Thank you. Bye bye. And see you next week.